Okay, so we can start, I think. So this is somehow Oleg. Sorry for my Czech pronunciation. So he's uh, uh, he's going to present like a series of work on uh, black box uh, optimization and how to plug it into deep networks with all of opportunities uh, can be uh, nowadays. And he uh, finished the Charles University and then work at, um, at Max Black Institute in Germany. Yeah. Um, hello everyone, it's great to be here. It's also great to give a live talk. I didn't imagine this would come so quickly with a room full of people. Um, yeah, it's a little bit improvised, so I'll need to change my slides over here, but I'll try to maintain eye context. Uh, right, let's dive right into it. So we'll talk about our latest line of work on differentiation of black box combinator solvers. And we will cover the content of a few recent papers of ours that started at iCLE. We recently presented it and it continued at CVPR. And now there is one more paper under, submi under submission and some, some ongoing work. Maybe uh, I'll start with some ideological motivation about what could be interesting, general interesting area for next day's machine learning and artificial And that's also a personal story because I did my PhD in Vienna under Vladimir Pomodor, who was a big champion of discrete optimization in computer vision. And together we did a lot of theory, we did, we, we did not do vision, but uh, I, you know, and then I switched to, for a postdoc to, to Max Planck, where I did pure deep learning for the first two years. And I, initially, I did not see that there could be a connection, but uh, maybe, actually, this is a good way to, to try to push both, dis both disciplines these days. And one, one technical reason I have is uh, combinator optimization has this amazing ability to combine two types of methods. You see both continuous optimization if you're trying to solve some traveling salesman problems or uh, NPR problems, you solve these relaxations and so on. But also it's the same world where you have all these data structures and fancy algorithmic ideas. And in combinatorial optimization, they live side by side, which is something that we are kind of jealous of in the deep learning community. We would also like to see, we are good at this continuous optimization, but we don't have this data structures and these algorithmic ideas really inside our architectures. So this is one very high level reason why I think it might be a good idea to, to look at this intersection. And that's what we've been doing. As for this talk, uh, we will focus on how combinatorial optimization can help in deep learning. There's also the other direction, which is interesting, but how we can maybe improve the solvers and so on, but we will not talk about this. The main idea is inspired by work that, that we have seen a few years back on introducing an intermediate layer inside the deep network that solves some optimization problem. This is a different optimization problem than the one the whole network is optimizing. It has nothing to do with the loss function, but it's an internal layer that solves some optimization problem. And you may have seen it's a prominent paper from 2017 from Brandon Amos and Zico Kolte where they started this whole line of work of different complex optimization methods that can be embedded as layers into neural networks. And what we are thinking is, but you know, something like this has to happen for combinatorial optimization. It's a different problem in, in, in nature, as we will see, but this was our idea. Yes, this, this, has to be, this has to be a good idea. And I also remember from last year's CDPRs, that there was this line of work that was somehow bugging me. I was not very happy with, 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 with how things were done. And it's, uh, it's this very particular line of work on learning of graph matching. Graph matching is this combinatorial problem where you do not only have these unary terms, like the normal bipartite matching, but you have these higher order terms to capture maybe some geometric information and so on. And again, this problem has a, has a lot of history in computer vision and people would like to see something like this inside, inside. And, you know, there are papers that are trying to learn the, the graph matching process. They are trying to learn the combinatorics. And they are very successful in the community just by looking at the titles. You see that it's, uh, you know, we are trying to learn how, how to solve the combinatorial problem. And this has been very popular. 
and there's you know learning combinatorial solver. This is even from this year CVPR. And I mean, yeah, I mean, this is all good work. It's technically very interesting, and I, I enjoy some aspects of it. And we ended up also uh, using some of their good ideas. In principle, we know we have a community of people who know how to solve these problems in a purely combinatorial setup. We have these amazing solvers that are actually really fast these days. So, you know, why should we why should we learn it once we already know how to do it? So, with all respect to this work, I, I thought that it may be it may be possible to improve on this. Also, and there's also an experience from my PhD days. It's, so we were writing all these theorems about uh, what is NP hard and what are the reductions and so on and so on. But then I got my hands on a SAT solver or a traveling salesman solver. And I, will, I could not believe it because these were NP hard problems and it could solve tens of thousands in what felt like sub quadratic time even. And uh, you know, this, the actual combinatorial solvers that come from the community in some cases are ridiculously good to the point that even as back when I was a theorist, this was compromising the concept of NP hardness because you know, they are supposed to take this exponential time or not polynomial time and it just wasn't the case in practice. And in fact, many lines of theoretical computer science are trying to you know, deal with some special classes of instances and so on and so on to, to some way explain how is it possible that in the real world the NP hardness doesn't show up as much. And uh, yes, once we have these amazing combinatorial optimization techniques, I would like to just use them inside deep networks instead of what we'll see was a common pattern is to, you know, we talked about before how combinatorial optimization has these two types of techniques, the continuous and the algorithmic. So what is a common pattern is to throw out everything algorithmic and keep only the continuous stuff and then you know, compute derivatives and so on and so on. And this is what I'm trying to argue against. You're losing a lot of performance, a lot of the sweetness, a lot of the magic if you work with these soft versions of the solvers. And uh, this, uh, we are not the first ones to have similar ideas. In fact, there are some, you can say old school methods that revolve around ways of incorporating or having a final layer that's, that, that does some inner optimization. Uh, but if you look at the, the theory they, they provide is not very well suited for this stochastic optimization. It doesn't quite match the deep learning setup. For example, optimizing an upper bound in a stock is not clear that it's the right thing to do. And uh, typically what also happens is that these frameworks force you to use specific loss functions. 